Now, okay, oh. guys, we, we got two topics left. And um, this was a surprise to me because uh, I was preparing for the show today. I was looking up on other articles and this was breaking news. And I'm quite uh, I'm quite happy about it. I'm quite happy about it. Um, this is coming from Deadline. And I like these two actors quite a bit, uh, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. But um, here we are, topic number seven, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon uh, launched production company with Rare Bird Capital's Jerry Cardano. And so, of course, this is your, this is your, not going to say John Wick, you're Jason Bourne and you're, you're Batman. Mm -hmm. As Deadline Mike Fleming reported back in June of this year, Rare Bird Capital Partners has today confirmed details in that a story, uh, uh oh, in that a story, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, and Gary uh, Carindall are launching an artist-led studio that partners with filmmakers to empower creative vision and broaden access to profit participation. The new studio's artist equity will seek to create entrepreneurial partnerships with filmmakers. Terms were not disclosed. Rare Bird Capital is making what's termed a significant financial commitment in launching the company, providing strategic capital and operational expertise to accelerate its development and production pipeline. Uh, Affleck and Damon combined uh, have generated more than a 10.7 billion in worldwide box office sales, 110 plus feature films as star and co-star, six produced screenplays, eight TV series as executive producer or writer, and earned three Academy Awards that will they will lead the company. So Larry, uh, sounds like they got some experience in the game. That's that's quite good. But just a little bit. Just a, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but artist equity is in an intellectual prop uh, property monetization platform anchored by three core principles the announcement stated broaden access to profit participation provide performance-based incentives to creators and crew that allow all participants in the production value chain to share its profits fewer ip monetization through creator partnerships focus on partnering with both established and emerging filmmakers who want to work in a talent-friendly environment with management that understands and supports their creative vision Leverage a data-driven approach to distribution. Utilize insights derived from a proprietary, pro, 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 or I cannot say that word. Proprietary. Thank you. God, I knew what it was. I'm not silly, y'all. I just couldn't say it. <laughs> Databases to better inform decision making around distribution strategy, optimizing reach and valuation content. Larry, uh, how do you feel about this, man? Does this uh, get you excited for the projects that they have uh, coming up in the pipeline and? Or are you a fan of these two performers as well? I am. I'll be perfectly honest. When I saw this headline, when you sent out the thing earlier, I was surprised because I thought they had already done this. Really? Yeah, okay. I thought they already had because they had a competition a while back. They had a competition and a competition show uh, for for filmmakers where they were had people create short films and submit them, and then the people the person who won they were giving them a they were giving them a deal, and I thought that they had created a, I thought they were working with, with uh, financiers and had started a production company for this very purpose. So I'm surprised that they're doing this now because I thought they had already done it. Really? So, unless right. the other one didn't work out or whatever, they're just doing it again. But yeah, I don't know. I got so, you. This, uh, this sounds, I mean, this is good. I, I like both of them and, and long story short, all those bullet points just kind of, I don't want to sound ridiculous or ignorant and sensitive kind of like common sense like a little wordy uh but it just seems like they're gonna have a lot of control over the films and television shows that they make and i'm happy for it you know they they have the um it's kind of i'm thinking i'm getting kevin feige vibes you know he's not hmm. he's a business person but he's also a creative you know these two you yeah. know not just creatives but they, they have some business sense as well but artist equity was conceived from Matt and my longtime passion for the art of storytelling and our shared desire to help creators deliver on their vision, as we have been fortunate to do throughout our career, said Affleck, who will hold the title chief executive offer. The entertainment industry is defined by great partnerships, writers, directors, producers, crews, actors. And throughout my career, I have learned that collaboration is what drives success. Our goal with artist equity is to build a creator focused studio that can optimize the production process and share our participation in the commercial success of projects. We are thrilled to partner with Jerry Carndall and the Rare Bird team who have long track record of building notable scale platform businesses among unique IP. Matt and I are look on wait, Matt and I are looking forward to working together to empower the current and future creative minds in the entertainment industry. So that's what's up right there. If you guys want to keep on reading, you can. 
there's a link to this in the description box below for you guys to read at your own leisure. But to me, this is good. This is good. And um, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's uh, that's what's up. Trip Zero says they want an Asta together. It makes sense. Right, 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 right. It does. It does. It does. And so hopefully uh, it's kind of off topic, but it has to do with uh, Ben Affleck. Hopefully he will still come back as Batman because uh, I, I would love to see him as Batman, you know, because he's my favorite Batman. I, I when I hear about projects like this, I think to myself for someone like Ben Affleck, I, I worry because I, I think to myself, well, this could be a blessing in disguise in one instance where he's busy and he doesn't have time to be self-destructive but self-destructive yeah the dude is a has all kinds of addiction issues you know what i think you're right but keep going i'm sorry and i and I, and sometimes i worry like when people start to take on to like they get clean and they take on too many projects and the stress gets to them and then they relapse and they go back and they start drinking and using whatever other substances they use and i don't want to see that happen with him i'd rather him continue to do well than to try and do too much so We'll you, know what I, you know what you know what you know what I just thought of. I think it, it came out not so long ago that his uh, ancestors were slave owners or something like that. Now mm -hmm. I know that's not his fault, but I was all it made sense because in a lot of his movies, he'll go out of his way to speak up for black people. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I remember a film he put out a few years ago. I think it was called A Silent Night. Mm -hmm. I think, and I like the movie, but I remember other critics criticizing him, saying that he was. Um, catering to black people or something. It, it was like a line of dialogue in that movie. It's like, yeah, when black people realize that they're the ones that built this country, it's going to be hell to pay in, or something like that. I'm trying to look it up on IMDb right now. I think, yeah, Live by Night. Yeah, this is... Yeah, yeah that this, was a really good movie. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. But anyway, guys, uh, again, like I said, link is in the description and uh, let us know what you think about this right here because uh, I'm dying to know, dying to know.